Good morning. morning. Bravissimo. I hear that. Uh, Welcome. Welcome here to Prague. Those of you who are live, physically on site, welcome to the Czech Republic. Welcome to the international visitors to Europe. And of course, welcome to the rest of the world that is either here or online. There really is a strong level of interest, a strong footprint uh, for this event. A bold ambitions, you might say. Um, just to be clear, this is the Meeting the Future Today event. If that doesn't mean anything to you, you might have clicked on the wrong link. You could be somewhere else. Those of you in the room, I believe you're in the right place. Um, we're going to start. We have a wonderful one-hour session where we can set the baseline for today, confirm what the expectations should be, and present to you the program. And it's a very ambitious program. And you will get from this what you get from it, what you choose to get from it. And that means attend as much as you can, speak as often as you can, and network with whomever you can. I was thinking about how to welcome you to this event, and I often find myself on random search engines seeking out famous sayings. These are half days of my life I will never get back. But there are times when I say to myself, what am I thinking about? What, how can I set the scene for this event? And one of the things that I was thinking back, and I'll explain to you a little bit about myself in a moment, but I was thinking back to when I first started in, in the career guidance sector in the 1980s. Um, and this saying was probably very popular and very well known and very well used, which was about choose a job that you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. And it's very aspirational. It's very nice. It says to you that it will never feel like work when you get there. Therefore, you never feel like you're working, even though you might be in a position that you class as, you know, paid, salaried. It's very aspirational, but it's very old-fashioned, I would say, as well. When we think about the world in which we live and what we would class as the potential longevity of a career in the modern world. And so, I tried to seek out something that was perhaps more reflective of the modern day. And of course, I found one which was a little bit longer. I think it comes from the original French language, always very flowery, but here, as the world we live in is so unpredictable, and I think we'll all agree that recent years have confirmed its unpredictability, the ability to learn and to adapt to change is imperative, alongside creativity, problem solving, and communication skills. And I felt that that was perhaps a better reflection of career guidance and the messages that we need to be relaying to individuals at the start of their career journey than a job for life. The job for life mentality has passed. It was very relevant, perhaps, in the 80s and the 70s. That is no longer the case. And I thought, as part of the ILO Global Commission on the Future of Work, this was very relevant. It's about that transportability, that adaptability, and building the skill sets that allow us to change and grow and adapt. And that was I felt a very good starting point for today. And keeping in mind that we are not here today in a sense to talk about the individuals, the beneficiaries of frontline services, that's obviously a consequence of what we will discuss, but we are talking about competence building for practitioners and professionals. And we will set the scene a little bit, as I say this morning. Now, myself, a little bit about me, why am I the guy standing on stage? Oddly enough, it's a Euro Guidance Network event. And I think back to August 1992, 30 years ago, when fax machines were all the rage. Everybody was wanting a fax machine. We had one. Everybody wanted to come around and see it. But in that fax machine, we got a fax from Brussels to confirm that we had been nominated as what was then known as the National Resource Center for Vocational Guidance. For those of you with long memories, 
that would have been financed under Petra II, Action 3B. Uh, it's a very specific niche funding area, but this was where the seed of Euro guidance began. And in August 1992, there were 12 addresses on that piece of paper, just 12 addresses, and one of them was in Bradford in the United Kingdom. They're no longer part of it. They made their own paths, so what can I say? But I was there at the start of that journey, and that was when we really started to think, what can this network be? And I'm overwhelmed by the, the amount of growth that I look back upon and see. I haven't been there for the whole journey. I joined in 92, I left in 2001 to pursue my own career. I had spent a few years in Brussels, and I now live in Scotland and I work as a consultant. But I still spend my life working in and around European collaboration with a view to improving and enhancing what we do in the world of education, training, skills, guidance, and employment. This is still my field. I'm still very passionate about it. So when I get invited to come along to an event like this, I can only say yes, as long as the diary is free. So I wanted to give you that little bit of background. Yes, 1992, 30 years ago. We'll hear a bit more about that anniversary soon. But certainly, you know, I was at the start of the journey, and I'm very pleased to be here. 30 years later. As a confirmation of the program, of course, it's the modern world, QR codes everywhere, links online, follow it on your phone, laptop, tablet, I don't know if virtual reality headsets have emerged in the room just yet. But yes, a reminder that we will spend the first hour setting the scene, and then there is this sort of wealth of workshops planned across A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. These are all locations. This is A. Remember this. Everything else is in another building, but this is A. But there are people here today that will guide you towards the coffee and away from the coffee and in the direction of the different workshops. Please be appreciative of the time that people have given to set up these workshops. And please try to be on time, because each workshop is 50 minutes only. So, you know, if you arrive five minutes late, that makes it only 45. And it's already difficult to encapsulate some of the messages that we've heard about and that you've seen written down into just a 50-minute slot. There are parallel sessions. One, we will have what we originally called a coffee break. I understood yesterday there's no coffee in the relocation slot. So don't look for the coffee. It won't be there. Somebody will be pushing you from room one to room two. There is coffee at 10.30. Parallel session one, relocate. Parallel session two, lunch break, thankfully. Time to breathe. After lunch, we will have a panel discussion here in the plenary room. We have five individuals who volunteered to be grilled by me with a set of questions prepared by a very active team of individuals. But hey, if you have questions as well, I'm going to be coming out there with the microphone and seeing what you want to say. And of course, if you're in the virtual world and you have questions at that point and in that session, we will tune into what you're asking. And if the question is pertinent, and if we have time to balance virtual and physical and what I already prepared, we'll bring you in as well. We're going to flip between the on-site and the off-site, the online and the physical. All of that will happen, and then we'll go to the final session of parallel sessions. At that point, you don't come back here. The last session will be out there in the tables, and you'll be doing a kind of networking poster session, and the event will come to a close. It's a ridiculously ambitious program of 21 different workshops, a panel session, a conferencing session, and somewhere in between, a cup of coffee, including for me. Now, when I woke up this morning, I decided that I hadn't got enough slides in my six minutes that I had available, so I wanted to add one more. And this is a Scottishism. I don't know if you've ever heard of the thing called a Scottishism, but in 1992, the new manager, the second manager in Euroguidance, which is even in the days before Mick Carey, for those of you who knew Euroguidance, so there were two female managers before, and one of them was from Glasgow in Scotland. And one of the things she taught me was this word, messages. And it made no sense to me whatsoever until last week. Because last week I was watching a program on my own TV, and I now live in Glasgow, which is some 30 years later. And I discovered that the word messages is not what we think of. 
We write down a message. But in Glasgow, messages means shopping. And they mean, I'm going to get the messages. I'm going shopping. I'm going to get what they would class as the daily food supplies, the top-up for the refrigerator, for the cupboard. And I still couldn't, across 30 whole years, I couldn't make sense of it. How can it be called messages? And it was explained to me that what would happen was individuals would write down, we need bread, we need milk, don't forget to buy batteries. And the person going to the shops would pick up the messages and then say, I'm going to get the messages. And suddenly I realized that it made sense, even though this 30-year period of not understanding messages. And it made me think about today. And in a way, what we're going to be doing is taking these messages from the different workshops and gathering them together and working out how much or how little of this we can pick up along the way. Because if I look across the room, and if I look at the list of people participating online, we come from a very, very broad range of countries, cultures, institutions, and practices. And our starting point in terms of developing the practitioner, developing the professional, will not be the same. So we might look at something and say, that's fine, but we're there. We've done that. That's absolutely lovely, but I have no interest whatsoever. But we might look at something else and say, oh my God, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I need. This is what we need to introduce in our system, in our organization, in our country. And this is the message that I will take away. So I'm making this link because I think it's a bit like a shopping list that you will put on the list only what you need and you will implement only what you need. And that was just what I woke up thinking this morning. What can I say? I have a strange mind. So, with that in mind, however, I would like to bring forward someone who I've personally known for almost 25 years, as we met during part of that initial journey when I was working in Euroguidance. Now, I have, I'm getting to the age where I need prompts, and there are a lot of people I have to introduce today, so I will be looking at prompts. There's no apology here, it's just an age thing. You start to forget words. So, um, a lovely prompt here. Margit Ramo is going to come up shortly, and she's going to really set the scene, the welcome, position this event in, in the larger scale of things. And Margit, we met in 98, you started work, Margit, in 98, in what I called earlier the National Resource Center for Vocational Guidance, the predecessor name to Euroguidance. Um, masters in social sciences, specializing in educational, what have I written here? Educational management. But the best thing I discovered, and you haven't seen this, of course, people send me all these wonderful things and I choose what I want to use. But what I found was your LinkedIn profile best encapsulates you. And your LinkedIn profile says that international affairs and innovation in career development is a passion. And I think that really does encapsulate you, Margaret, because that's what I've seen and observed and understood every time we've met over those 25 years. Uh, Margit operates at international level and collaborates with lots of the big actors. We're talking about ETF, the European Commission. Some of these words may or may not mean things to you. IAEVG, um, Academia, CareersNet, lots of the big networks that working and operating in career guidance and to support the messages and the work that the Euroguidance Network does. I know that at national level, you're an active member of the Estonian Association of Career Guidance Counselors, and that's also very important about strengthening that footprint there. And that word innovation is what you try to push out there as well in, in that audience. And then most importantly, and really you will talk about this anyway, so I won't say so much, but you're part of the interagency group that is part of this Global Careers Month within which this event features. So I think Without further ado, I would like to invite you forward, Margit, to give us that formal welcome. And I invite you all to give Margit a round of applause as a welcome. Two slides. Good morning, everybody. This was the longest intro I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, this, <laughs> this lovely journey back in history. And really, I have to say that Paul was one of my very first mentors when I started in, in the network of National Resource Centers for Vocational Guidance. It was a lovely trip to Bradford. Thank you for kicking off this whole journey. 
Okay, good morning everybody from my side as well. Uh, meeting the future today, competence development of the European guidance community. This is the reason, at least one of the reasons why we are here today, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Uh, and it's really exciting to see that uh, Euroguidance call for international guidance community to promote the value of career guidance and to reflect on European tools, practices and frameworks uh, as means of building competencies for the future has been received with such a great passion. I'm really grateful. Thank you for all for coming and it's, it's, it's a big pleasure and I'm really excited. Nearly 1,000 professionals um, uh, and more than 50 countries have been registered for this event. So it's, it's, it's a, such a powerful community and I, I, I am really looking forward for all the exchange we, are, we have planned for today. And nearly 70 experts have actually taken this call very personally. So uh, they are contributing to the program with their own experience and they deserve a special praise. Furthermore, many have been working hard to prepare for this important event and keeping their finger on the pulse today and will definitely play also a role in, uh, in follow-up activities. So Euroguidance conference team, of course our wonderful Czech team and institutions, very, very warm. Thank you to all of you for this hard work done already and I'm, I'm sure it will be splendid today. Your openness for sharing and contributing is crucial for the success of this event and it gives us all great opportunity to learn from each other and grow as professionals. It is a unique event, as Paul mentioned already. Uh, Euroguidance Network is a network of national resource centres and we are very dedicated for internationalisation in guidance and competence development of the European guidance community. And this year we celebrate our 30th birthday. So happy birthday Euroguidance! If I can ask you for applause, <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, it is especially meaningful to celebrate our birthday during the first ever Global Careers Month, um, which, is, which has been for the last three weeks in the hearts of the entire guidance community internationally. We are all dedicated to announce loud and clear career guidance helps people to fulfill their talents and grow professionally, but it also benefits for economies and societies at its, as it provides opportunity to use the full potential of the labour force and it is definitely an investment. Thank you to the interagency group for launching this great uh, campaign. And in fact, uh, two institutions are present today. Cynthia Harrison from CEDEFOP will give a keynote speech very soon. And Florian Cadlets from the European Training Foundation is act actually active in a workshop, so you are welcome to the workshop. And also in the panel discussion, you will all meet him as well. Finally, I have a call for action for all of you. Let's use this day for sharing and peer learning constructively. Let's design and meet our future today. Are you ready? <laughs> So our invitation is uh, to listen carefully to the rich experience shared during the keynotes, parallel sessions, panel discussions, but also during coffee breaks. And think what is the priority for capacity building among the guidance professionals. We will come back to this main question in the afternoon and please take all the good ideas you hear from here and then let's collect all these takeaways um, to, to, to take them further. So in Euroguidance we are very dedicated to collect all your thoughts and uh, take this for our future actions. Thank you again for coming and I, I am sure you will have an inspiring day. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Margaret. Indeed, yes. I think my intro was longer than your speech. I worry. <laughs> it's hard to shut me up. What can I say? Um, yes, indeed, part of a big push, a big focus on, on careers and you know, it makes no sense at all not to then start to think about the bigger organizations that are playing a role. And of course, we learned during COVID that not everyone can be physically present at every event. And we've learned to be inclusive of the virtual world and speakers who might not be able to get there. And this keynote is actually going to be delivered virtually from Cedefop. So I'm going to try, I will introduce Cynthia and I think that she's going to then appear on screen as far as we know. So that should be okay. Cynthia works for CEDEFOP, and CEDEFOP is the European Center for the Development of Vocational Training. 
They've been around forever, it feels like. Certainly in my professional life, they started in Berlin and they moved over to Thessaloniki. And Cynthia works there and is, part, is responsible, in a way, for lifelong guidance projects at Cetaphil, part of a team of experts working on topics related to career guidance, the thing which we are here today to talk about, but also looking at the financing of VET and adult learning and what I call VNFIL, because I'm too lazy to write it out in full, but the validation of non-formal and informal learning, something that's very passionate to me as well. Um, Cynthia manages working career guidance and also coordinates CareersNet, a set of ops network of independent experts in the field of career guidance and career development. And Cynthia has also been engaged in activities relating to upskilling, social inclusion, civic competencies, and school leadership. I think that's your whole CV, Cynthia. Are you there? Can you hear us loud and clear? Yes. Yes, can you hear me? Oh, absolutely. So I'm really going to okay. hand the baton over to you. We're very pleased to have you with us here today. Uh, as if you were here physically, I'm going to invite everyone to give you a short round of applause, and then we hand over to you to hear wise words from Cetaphor. Please, everybody, a round of applause for Cynthia. <laughs> okay, good. Hopefully, I think... Uh, okay, good. I see myself actually on the screen. Uh, the camera is conveniently positioned, so this is really helpful. Thank you for inviting me here today to speak and uh, all the passionate uh, words already uh, in the opening. It's wonderful. Uh, I can be here uh, for this hybrid meeting, though I regret, of course, not being there. So I will really miss the interesting live se sessions and this is a shame. Uh, Paul provided a great start, Margit, and I'm mindful of the time, so I may uh, hop over some of the points, but hopefully I will be clear. Uh, we really appreciate the efforts of all the Euroguidance colleagues, Margit, Peter, and more from Czechia, the great en energy put into this event. So I think I can speak on behalf of the interagency career guidance working group agencies and organizations. Thank you, for, thank you so much for organizing this and for taking on one of the key themes of the month, as you know, in focusing on the changing role of career guidance practitioners and quality standards, their skills and competences, competence development, and how this really addresses the call for uh, investing more in the quality of the lifelong guidance system services and tools uh, for to benefit the beneficiaries. The program today is, uh, has been said, is, is very ambitious, extremely ambitious and diverse, to say the least, and it will surely generate some useful outcomes for the month. We'll be collecting all of these outcomes from, from the regional focal points uh, for our summary that we will produce in next year, in 2023. So you'll hear from us again then. And I want to add to what's already been said, in relation to the month, and hopefully not to repeat, the working group, group is composed uh, by CETAFOP, the European Commission, ETF, ILO, OECD, UNESCO, and the World Bank. So we can say that we've only set the frame for the Global Careers Month. Uh, with our colleagues at ETF and ILO, I have to say, taking on a really a great deal of the labor uh, this time around. We open and close the month with two events. Uh, as you know, the opening was on 8th of November, and then we have a closing event on December 13th, so I hope to see everybody there online. And through the different concerted uh, media efforts, some podcasts we've produced, social media, news, and linkages shared globally, and through events like this, we hope to bring more visibility to the activities, challenges, and expertise of career practitioners, uh, career staff, researchers, trainers, service providers, and the various career professionals and managers and other stakeholders who really are at the interfaces of practice. And we want to cast a spotlight on those also who gather evidence and publish papers to support effective and professional practice and who provide input for policy and system development across the different regions. We want to bring attention to the topic of career development support in all its forms. 
We also wanted to inspire people to gather together uh, to reflect on common issues, as well as those that are different, that diverge, and to share new knowledge, evidence, and practices. We wanted to finally uh, foreground how and in what ways investing in quality guidance system is important for young people in school and for adults during the multiple career transitions and through lifelong learning as people now move in and out of the labor market uh, and change jobs more frequently and experience different life cha changes as well. Just to mention that this interagency group, even before it was really fully consolidated, produced uh, different products. We have two versions of the advocacy tool investing in career guidance in order to strengthen those messages before and after the global uh, health pandemic. We conducted a survey back in 2020 during the pandemic and published a report to investigate the unfolding situation then in guidance and career services, uh, discovering, let's say, uh, signals that while career support and guidance was uh, considered important, there was an inadequate supply to meet the needs. And the survey also indicated the real jump, uh, which is, let's say, old news by now, into the world of digital, digital technology full force, more than ever, with the closing of services around the world at that time. So we worked together with several guidance experts from our CareersNet network and with ICC DPP, as well as the other international guidance experts who generously gave their time to these efforts. We're also working more and more, uh, more on other outputs as a group, and so you have surely not heard the last of us yet. As um, about CETIFOP over the past two, two decades, CETIFOP has developed extensive work related to policies on ensuring quality in the lifelong guidance systems uh, in Europe, such as reference research into standards for competences of guidance professionals, guidance system development, policy monitoring and evaluation, as well as improving partnership and cooperation uh, among stakeholders. We, we try to bring stakeholders together, experts for mutual learning, uh, sharing of uh, practices uh, and improving the use, uh, more recently I can say, improving the use of ICT and LMI or labor market information in career guidance. So we've been really active, also thanks to the many colleagues whose work we're building on. As for cooperation, this is one reason we are here today and we can never uh, underestimate the role that cooperation plays in furthering the field and at different levels. So in research, policy learning, resource sharing, tools development and, and creating common frameworks, in creating integrated platforms and identifying gaps in services through feedback really uh, in an effort to expand the vision and the possibilities, as well as for uh, innovation and, and brainstorming together. The less positive news is that cooperation and partnership is not always easy, particularly with so many challenges right now with the speed of change and transformation and new social and work practices and the difficulties that keep on coming and these um, challenges find their way to the door of the career practitioners and the service providers. In the European context, policy initiatives since 2020 increase attention on guidance provision and services, partic particularly in facilitating engagement in re and upskilling, preventing exclusion and widening opportunities for all individuals to shape their career and skills development in a holistic way in a lifelong learning perspective. For example, the European Skills Agenda helps reinvigorate the work of governments towards implementing key actions and assigning and incentives. Oh, I hear some noise behind. Um, and investing in their guidance systems to ensure that support services are of good quality. The European Pillar of Social Rights enshrines people's right to work and to lifelong learning. So change is coming from all directions. I, I would say there's a push and pull momentum. Um, and also this is being enacted through different policy strategies. 
The pandemic experience influenced not only the delivery of guidance, use of more ICT and online channels, and the need for more digital skills among practitioners, but it sheds light on the need for more professional development and task changes, more creativity and training and handling diverse user groups. But I would argue also the changes are far reaching since career guidance and career development are an integral part of the wider ecosystem they are part of, education and training, the labor market, skill system. And these are uh, being driven very much by technological changes, by the green transition and the impact that ICT is having on our world. Nevertheless, we need to take into account uh, and take, take an to account the significance of these developments and take note of how career guidance as a field is being repositioned, including the increasing attention on the integration of guidance concepts into different policy fields, domains, sectors, institutions, and services and, and workplaces as well. So the policy attention in Europe is increasing. Finally, I want to underline a few uh, points, uh, three final areas in considering the role of the career practitioner specifically within these other priorities as, uh, as career guidance is repositioning. Firstly, there is an increasing in interest in Europe as we move toward different structural developments and doing more with fewer resources in rethinking ways of improving access and support for all, to employ new models for networked, integrated, and I say integrated, integrated in guidance, but also across, across sectors, but also across policy fields, such as financing, validation of non-formal, informal learning, collaborative and coherent services, group approaches to enhance pathways for users. So career practitioners need to find their way to work with other fields in other ways with more complex information. And many, and secondly, many of these innovative career solutions, uh, for example, single access points aiming to better support a greater number of people with career platforms, chatbots, the involvement and use of ICT and foresight data, uh, different kinds of labor market information Practitioners need access to training to keep up with these developments. Another point is uh, practitioners need to understand self-help services and new forms of labor market information and to really exploit the potential of these tools and to assist clients through a range of strategies and make use of all these resources and to feel confident in doing so. Some of these tools are essential for increasing accessibility. There are calls for, uh, my final point, there are calls for additional support and guidance, especially in view of the past years with the turbulent labor market, including this profound uh, uncertainty, which has already been mentioned, and is a word we often hear these days. Uh, the continuing effects since the pandemic on our societies and on working life and the need for uh, adaptability to changing job tasks and skills required and for those who may face greater challenges in the green and digital transitions and those who have difficulty coping, coping with this uncertainty and change and who are far from the labor market. We also need to keep in mind the newly arrived in Europe. I want to thank again, uh, thank you again for inviting me here and, and also uh, wish you a really wonderful and successful uh, continuing event. And now I pass the, I think I pass the floor back to Paul, if I'm correct. Thank you, Cynthia, indeed. A round of applause. Um, thanks, Cynthia. Yes, some important messages there. We, uh, you know, I didn't write it all down because listening and writing at the same time, I was, I was impassioned. But new knowledge, new evidence, new practices, you know, a changing world, the need to rapidly follow that changing world to transform the service provision that we have. 
And you know, I always put Cedefop as my go-to in terms of you know, getting insight and analysis of what's happening on the ground. This was no more evident than during the pandemic when we had that rapid response. And certainly now it's good to see that we are staying on track and, and to have you on side with that. So thank you very much, Cynthia. Uh, we are gonna move swiftly on. Before we go to our next keynote speaker, I should advise that this presentation will be in Czech. Now, if you're a local, that's easy. Relax, chill. If you're international and you haven't managed in 24 hours to pick up the Czech language, then please get a headset. If you haven't got a headset, they're just outside that door. I suggest you run out and grab one now. You could also just log into Zoom and plug in your own headset. That's absolutely fine. But it will be in Czech. And there will be stages throughout the day in this room where translation will continue between Czech and English. If you're online, you have the button to select EN or CS, English or Czech, so you can switch the language and you'll go directly through to our wonderful interpretation team at the top. So you have that option. So without further ado, I'd like to invite forward our next keynote speaker, Monica Miestanova. I'm trying my very best here. <laughs> Monica has a background in the public sector and for more than 20 years has been working for the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports. I need my clicker. I have a wonderful ability to put these things down. There we go. So you can see who I'm talking about, Monica Miestanova. Uh, Monica is an expert in adult learning and is currently head of the adult education department at the ministry. Uh, and they are responsible for further education, policy, for adult training and retraining, and for the national qualification system. But today, and keeping in mind the focus of today, Monica is going to give us an insight into the Czech policy agenda for career guidance. And we talked already with Cedefop about the ability to get new knowledge and new evidence and new insights. And this is a wonderful opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about the policy background here in our host country. So I invite Monica to come forward. Monica, are you in here? Ah, there you are. Yes. And to share with us in a very limited amount of time, unfortunately, but some, some thoughts. Monica, over to you, please. A round of applause. Thank you. Dobré dopoledne, dámy a pánové, děkuji Polovi za představení. Obzvláště oceňuji výslovnost mého příjmení, ta určitě nebyla pro něj jednoduchá. Já jsem k vám přišla z Prahy, z ministerstva školství a ráda bych vám, vás informovala o tom, jak se vypořádáváme s kariérovým poradenstvím na ministerstvu školství, jaká je politika, jak o kariérovém poradenství přemýšlíme. Pro ministerstvo je vždy nejdůležitější, jaké jsou strategické dokumenty, které vlastně dávají vždy strategický směr pro určité období. My máme strategii vzdělávací politiky, která, kterou máme na 10 let do roku 2030 a máme tam ještě takové magické znamenko plus, protože předpokládáme, že v v tom směru, který nastavuje tato vzdělávací strategie, budeme i nadále pokračovat. Ta strategie zmiňuje dva základní hlavní strategické cíle. Ten první se zaměřuje na vzdělávání kompetencí potřebných pro aktivní občanský, profesní i osobní život. A ten druhý strategický cíl se zaměřuje na snižování nerovností v přístupu ke vzdělávání. Domnívám se, že kariérové poradenství je vlastně horizontálně obsaženo v obou dvou těchto strategických cílech. Nicméně jako samostatný úkol je zmíněn i ve strategické linii, a to konkrétně 1F, proměna kariérového poradenství. V rámci této, tohoto úkolu se zaměřujeme na to, abychom podpořili rozvoj, kariérový rozvoj jednotlivých žáků, aby si i žáci uvědomovali, že nejenom vzdělávání, získávání znalostí a dovedností je to, co se ve škole potřebují naučit, ale i to, jakým způsobem vlastně budou svoji kariéru nadále řídit a rozvíjet. 
zaznělo tady, jak se mění svět, jak je potřeba neustále se učit a vlastně dovednosti ke kariérovému seberozvoji jsou podle mě jedny z klíčových, které si vlastně ze vzdělávání, z počátečního vzdělávání mají žáci odnášet. V souvislosti s tím bychom rádi podporovali a rozvíjeli i profesní identitu žáků s tím oborem, který studují. My máme poměrně velkou fluktuaci žáků mezi obory, kdy až 30 absolventů odborného vzdělávání potom nepokračuje v tom svém oboru, který vystudovali. Takže poradit tak při, před volbou povolání, poradit tak, aby volba byla správná, aby se ten žák mohl identifikovat s tím oborem, který si vybral a aby mohl v, se rozvíjet i v rámci toho oboru. V tomto smyslu je důležité pracovat i s pedagogickými pracovníky, s učiteli, aby pochopili, že i toto je jejich role a aby uměli poradit a rozvíjet svoje žáky právě v té profesní identitě a v tom kariér, kariérovém seberozvoji. Je to poměrně důležitá věc, která vlastně prostupuje celou tou strategií a celou jako myšlenka, která je horizontální. V rámci ministerstva školství máme stránku, kterou zřizuje naše organizace Národní pedagogický institut. A tato stránka se jmenuje InfoAbsolvent. Na této stránce mohou žáci, ale i jejich rodiče hledat různé informace, jsou tam informace o školách, o tom, jak vypadají absolventi a trh práce, jak jsou tam rady, jsou tam informace, je, to, je tam všechno, co vlastně můžou potřebovat a co jim může pomoci, zejména v době, kdy volí povolání, kdy volí obor nebo školu, na kterou půjdou po základní škole. Kromě infoabsolventa, který je, myslím si, velmi oblíbený mezi, mezi žáky a mezi rodiči, máme nástroj, který je, myslím si, velmi důležitou platformou pro setkávání se institucí, které se věnují kariérovému poradenství. Je, ta instituce nebo ta platforma se jmenuje Národní poradenské fórum a zřídil ho po té, co bylo neformálně provozováno, tak po určité době ho zřídilo společným prohlášením Ministerstvo školství a Ministerstvo práce. A po dvou letech se tato ministerstva střídají v předsednictví v rámci toho Národního poradenského fóra. A máme tam několik institucí, které se věnují přímo kariérovému poradenství. A je to místo, kde se několikrát do roka potkáváme, hovoříme o úkolech, které máme a o problémech, které se v této oblasti řeší. Druhou důležitou platformou, kterou tady nemusím představovat, je Euroguidance, která je zřízená pod, pod NPI, Národním pedagogickým institucem našeho ministerstva. Kariérové poradenství je téma, které se objevuje v různých, v různých oblastech a je také podporováno finančně. Kromě již zmíněného InfoAbsolvent webu, kde jsou tedy informace, samozřejmě se věnují i Evropské sociální fondy tématům kariérového poradenství. A my tady máme dva fondy. Jeden se jmenuje Operační program Jan Ámos Komenský a jeden se jmenuje Operační program Zaměstnanost. Operační program Jan Ámos Komenský má v sobě obsaženy takové zjednodušené modely projektů, kterým říkáme šablony, do kterých se můžou zjednodušeným administrativním procesem hlásit školy. A já jsem tady vypíchla dvě karty pro střední školy a konzervatoře a pro základní školy, kde v rámci těchto šablon, těchto zjednodušených projektů mohou školy žádat o finanční příspěvek na personální náklady. Mimo jiné si mohou zvolit i kariérového poradce. To znamená, mohou vlastně z evropských peněz 
si zaplatit nějaký třeba částečný nebo plný úvazek kariérového poradce a využívat je pro potřeby své školy. To, jestli si zvolí právě tento úvazek kariérového poradce nebo si vyberou nějaké jiné, jsou v souladu s jejich dlouhodobými záměry a záměry školy. To znamená, je to opřeno o nějaké strategické směřování té školy i v souladu vlastně s myšlením zřizovatele. Kromě operačních programů se také kariérové poradenství dá nalézt i v Erasmu Plus a v platformě, která je pro další vzdělávání, a to je EPALE. V České republice máme je Národní soustavu kvalifikací, která má v sobě v tuto chvíli asi 1500 profesních kvalifikací. Principem je, že v Národní soustavě kvalifikací je obsažená kvalifikace, která má definován, definovánu zkoušku. A kdokoliv, kdo se rozhodne, že k té zkoušce chce přistoupit, tak může. Není zkoumáno, jakým způsobem získal svoje znalosti a dovednosti. A v případě, že zkoušku složí úspěšně, tak získá osvědčení které je opatřeno malým státním znakem a vodoznakem a vypadá jako, osvě, jako vysvědčení, která se získávají na konci, například maturitní vysvědčení na konci studia. A je to celostátně uznávaný certifikát. To je poměrně u nás unikátní, protože do té doby, než vlastně Národní soustava kvalifikací začala vznikat a fungovat, tak nebylo možné získat certifikát jiným způsobem než absolvováním vzdělávání. Tento systém tedy respektuje to, že znalosti a dovednosti se získávají i jiným způsobem než pouze účastí na vzdělávání a vlastně stanovuje, jakým způsobem mám prokázat, že ty znalosti a dovednosti mám a v tom případě mohu ten příslušný certifikát získat. V Národní soustavě kvalifikací jsou různé kvalifikace, ale jedna z nich, kterou bych tady ráda představila, je právě kariérový poradce, kariérová poradkyně. Je to náročná kvalifikace, která je na sedmé úrovni nebo šesté, sedmé úrovni evropského rámce kvalifikací, to znamená, že to je skutečně náročná zkouška. A v rámci toho systému, aby fungoval, my máme takzvané autorizované osoby, které jsou oprávněny zkoušet a vydávat osvědčení. Zdravím naše autorizované osoby i tady v sále, protože vím, že tady jsou a jsem moc ráda, že jsou účastní i na tomto, na tomto setkání. Celkově za dobu účinnosti té profesní kvalifikace máme 175 úspěšně, úspěšných absolventů, to znamená osob, které drží, jsou držiteli osvědčení kariérového, kariérového poradce nebo poradkyně. Ještě bych chtěla upozornit na to, že jsme, a to je poměrně čerstvá záležitost, že jsme přejmenovali genderově korektně všechny nebo téměř všechny profesní kvalifikace v Národní soustavě kvalifikací, jak je vidět i na názvu kariérový poradce, kariérová poradkyně. Myslím si, že to, i, i toto je jeden z praktických příkladů kariérového poradenství v praxi, protože to, jakým způsobem nazýváme povolání, je důležité i pro volbu povolání a pro to, jak vlastně jsou jednotlivé, jednotlivá povolání vnímána. Takže jsme přistoupili k tomu, že jsme z genderově nekorektně pojmenované soustavy pojmenovali celou, soustav, celou národní soustavu kvalifikací korektně a máme tam tedy všechny názvy tak, aby odpovídali, aby měli vlastně obě, obě, formy, obě formy toho názvu. Ještě bych chtěla říct, že k té Národní soustavě kvalifikací vážeme i možnost získat Europas, to znamená doložit dodatek k tomu osvědčení v angličtině, kdy je vlastně možno to osvědčení použít i v cizině, 
a jednoduše doložit, vlastně, které kompetence ta daná osoba s kouškou z profesní kvalifikace získala. Nedovolím si nezmínit, že Národní soustava kvalifikací vychází z Národní soustavy povolání, tu pro změnu vede Ministerstvo práce a sociálních věcí. A opět je to nástroj, který je vhodný pro využití jako nástroj pro kariérové poradenství, protože popisuje všechna povolání, která rozlišujeme v České republice, taktéž popisuje, jaké vstupní požadavky, jaké nároky na, na to konkrétní povolání jsou. Dokonce uvádí i průměrný očekávaný výdělek v té dané profesi. Takže je to opět nástroj, který je pro kariérové poradenství vhodný k využití. Chtěla bych touto cestou poděkovat a ocenit spolupráci s různými institucemi. Je to zejména Ministerstvo práce a sociálních věcí, se kterým se dělíme o předsednictví v Národním poradenském fóru, ale jsou to také naše přímo řízené organizace Národní pedagogický institut Dům zahraniční spolupráce, který vede a Národní pedagogický institut, který vede právě platformu Euroguidance. Děkuji vám za pozornost, přeji vám úspěšný pracovní den na konferenci a předávám slovo. Thank you, Monica. Indeed, useful insights, fresh updates. That's exactly what we're here for. It's, it's really starting the day as we mean to go on, and also I think as we start. The journey talking about qualifications, I think we're going to progress beyond that very much today and start to move into the world of competence and continuing competence and upskilling. But without further ado, and conscious of the fact I'm meeting into your coffee break, uh, I'd like to invite forward our final speaker for this session. This session, we started with the big welcome. We understood what this event means in the Global Careers Month. We heard from SEDAFOP about insights, analysis, European level priorities and practices and exercises and initiatives. We heard on the ground what's happening with regard to career guidance, practitioners and professionals and how the profession itself is being qualified. But what we're missing now and what we're going to get uh, is an insight into what Euroguidance is doing. And I'd like to invite forward our fourth and final speaker, Eva Balok. Kaloyanov, that's my best attempt here, who's going to talk to us about how Euroguidance, thank you, supports professionals in competence development. And as I say, it's part of that bigger journey about how the network is learning to respond. Now, Eva has been working in Euroguidance and Erasmus+, Plus, as you will see here in Austria at the OEAD, uh, since 2000, a member of the network steering group and a very exciting mix of original studies in cultural anthropology and Chinese. I mean, wow, lovely, <laughs> very, very exciting. Of course, complemented by a diploma in training as a career guidance counselor. So, Eva, over to you. Share with us what's happening with the network. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul, for this nice introduction. Greeting to all of you on behalf of the Euroguidance Network. Um, uh, we are very happy to have this conference here having uh, had it so well organized by our Czech Euroguidance colleagues. I think this also deserves an additional round of applause. Um, what I'm going to do now is to briefly walk you through um, uh, and to give you a brief overview on what Euroguidance is doing to support guidance professionals in competence development since 30 years, as we heard today. I'm not going too much into the, down the history lane, but just to mention again, 1992 establishment of the network by 10 centers. Paul Guest was a, um, a founding member, so we're very happy to have him here at the 30th anniversary year of the Euroguidance Network. Um, this was the Petra program. Um, what we had afterwards was Leonardo da Vinci, lifelong learning, and now Erasmus+. Plus. And um, it has to be stressed that all these programs, programs recognized that guidance is a core element in leading people from education to work and from work to work. Um, so it's really about lifelong guidance, it, pupils, adults, 
um, helping them to find, uh, to making the right decisions. And what Euroguidance is doing is to give guidance counselors those competencies needed, especially in view of um, international um, uh, matters. Um, as you can see, uh, the main target group guidance counselors, both from the field of education and labor, um, uh, we operate in uh, different working groups. And our two main common goals here um, at network levels is to, port, uh, is to support the competence development in view of transnational mobility and to also strategically disseminate on uh, the European dimension of lifelong guidance. Of course, sometimes we are looking beyond Europe, um, especially when we are cooperating with networks such as IAEVG, um, ETF, etc. Um, so we are very also proud to have this conference under the umbrella of the Global Careers Month and to be able to work with such important networks and partners. Yeah. Um, what do we do uh, in terms of competence development? Um, just very briefly. Um, we do have, uh, on our website, we have online publications, for instance, uh, articles published jointly by Euroguidance colleagues in set of for publications. We, have, we host webinars with some of the experts that are actually give, holding workshops here to, today. And um, we also focus on e-courses on mobility guidance especially in view of more and more people working remotely, also in view of the recent years, also in view of the launch of the new Europass portal. I would like to draw your attention to um, uh, an e-course that will be launched next year. Um, it's now being tested and it will assist guidance professionals to use all the uh, features of the new Europass in their work with the clients. So we will be very happy to launch it in March and then have you test it, use it, and hopefully um, really integrate it in your work. So um, we also um, uh, help building up competencies uh, with study visits. I only want to mention the academia program. There will be a workshop on it this afternoon. Um, uh, the French colleagues who are coordinating the academia networks just told me that last year, even despite the pandemic, 130 guidance counselors in Europe were able to visit these two, uh, three to four day study visits in different countries. So I really invite you to have a look at our website. The new course catalog is online for courses next May and turn to your Euroguidance Center to find out how you can, can participate. Um, we also um, organize cross-border seminars, just recently one in Riga, um, and support transnational cooperation activities under Erasmus+. Plus. Yeah, um, the second um, uh, main aim is strategic communication. How is it done? Um, we have the main website, uh, eurogans.eu, and one of the most visited pages there is the brief overview on national guidance system in all the participating Erasmus Plus countries. Have a look um, at the brief introductions. Some of them link to the CEDEFOP inventory. Um, those, uh, of course, uh, from EU member states. Um, have a look at the newly launched Good Practices database, now containing over 80 good practices across Europe. You will also find out more about it in one of the workshops. Yeah, then also have a look at the resource pools we have created on our website, um, especially in view of current challenges uh, that guidance counselors were confronted with. Um, most and foremost, um, uh, the interruption that was uh, created by the pandemic, Euroguidance stepped up and um, helped in e-ways to co uh, connect the guidance community across Europe. Uh, we provided webinars, study visits were even study visits were even provided in in an online way. And then uh, this year, sadly, we um, 
we uh, pulled our forces together and created um, resources for people working with refugees, um, especially you know people who are not trained in recognizing what trauma is causing on people they are counseling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we um, cooperated with experts in the field, providing a webinar and also a resource pool. Have a look, and then uh, the already mentioned Euro Pass. Um, this is my last message to you. Please have a look at our publications. We have a biannual insights magazine, um, the, a freshly printed one um, that you will find on our website. And the next one, the next insights magazine will focus on today's outcomes. So um, workshops will submit articles and you will uh, read all about it in our next insights magazine next year. The highlights, the Eurogans highlights, summarize what's, what national centers are doing on national and on network level. So have a look at the highlights. Uh, the next issue will be a combined one. It will comprise 2021, 2022, and it will be issued next year. And if you want to be kept informed about upcoming webinars, publications, uh, also um, training opportunities, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Um, and you will get monthly information on that. So it remains to wish you a very interesting, fruitful conference and um, a lot, with a lot of networking opportunities. And yeah, I hand over to Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much. So now it's all about instructions. First of all, I get told off by my friends, they come and visit, I never give them coffee. I'm the laziest person ever. I never gave anybody a glass of water that came on the stage, and I'm depriving you of your coffee right now. But it will happen soon, I promise you. First, I wanted to say that we are going to start moving into the part of the event where you gather knowledge, skills, information, expertise from these different sessions. There will be Session one, which starts at 11 o'clock for 50 minutes, a 10-minute crossover. They're all here, but you have the QR code. You can see where it is, but they're all here. This is A, and everything else is outside. Somebody from the organizing team is going to come up in a second and tell you more about that. But it, you don't come back here. So 50 minutes, 10 minutes to turn around, go to your next session. It's called quickly relocate. Then you have your session two, and then you have lunch. And after lunch, at 2 o'clock, Central European time, wherever you are, now I know it's crazy to tell people online when to have their lunch, but it's a gap. It's do what you want. Eat if you will. But please be back here at 1400 check time because we're going to have the panel session. And people have given up a lot of time, and we can ask them some really crazy questions, you know? So that's a wonderful opportunity. But first, I'd like to invite someone from the host team to come forward. We have some micros here if you want to take one. I have one. I have you have one, huh? Good. Peter, over to you. Our host, please, a round of applause. So uh, thank you for, uh, for this uh, applause. But I would like to say very, very simple things. Uh, one is that you have this map, yes? And it's very important because uh, uh, after coffee break, you can choose your workshops in this uh, other building, which, which is like a circle. <laughs> and so all four workshops uh, parallel uh, are in this building. So it's very close to here, and a lot of students is here, so you will be not lost in other building of university. So it's, it's, and it's very big, and there they, we have a poster there, this violet, or which is color, maybe pink, violet. <laughs> so you will find it after coffee break. And, uh, but I would like to invite you also to stay with us, because we will have national prize giving ceremony, like parallel session A. Agenda. It's a ceremony here in Czech language in, with interpretation to the English. So you can choose also to be lazy and to stay here. <laughs> but don't afraid, the adventure is waiting for you to go to other building. And um, uh, the, the last, would I, would, I would like to say the lunch is here also. It's very simple. It's just here and coffee break is also here. So both it's here. It's, uh, that's all I think. Okay, so just as a reminder, very important. This is A, 
B, C, D, and E are in the building across the way. People will push you. Don't stand still for long. You will be moved into a room. F and G are virtual only online. The links are in the agenda. You will find it. Otherwise, enjoy your coffee outside, but be on time, 11 o'clock, at your first session. Thank you. Thank you.